Great. Morning, everyone. Uh, uh, Florida Classic Week, we'll open up with a statement from Coach um, and then open up to questions. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good to see everyone. Uh, obviously, before we start, just like to um, again send my condolences to um, everyone up at Virginia. And obviously, Tony Elliott is a close friend of mine. Um, you know, news got out this morning that there was a shooting there and um, involved some of his players, and that's a coach's worst nightmare, a parent's worst nightmare, let alone a coach. And um, my heart's heavy this morning, and um, that's something that I dread as a coach. Obviously, we're in charge of over 100 guys, and every night, you know, we go to bed hoping that we don't get that phone call. And um, so I, I, my thoughts, prayers, condolences, everything is out, goes out to to him, to his team, to the families of those affected. Um, just a, a very devastating uh, course of events. Um, you know, but to talk about the game last week, um, really proud of how the guys just continue to show resilience. Um, defensively, you know, we're playing at a level that you know matches last year and um, you know, right up there with some of the top defenses that we've had at this place. And obviously we've had our fair share of top notch defenses over the years. Um, but they're playing really good football, uh, held Alabama State to 14 yards rushing, um, 120 something yards passing. Um, you know, put it in perspective, Xavier Smith had more total yards himself receiving than Alabama State's entire team. And so just a light side effort by those guys. And, you know, had they not played like that, we probably don't win the game. Um, 18 years of coaching, I don't know if I've ever been a part of a game where you um, miss four opportunities in the red zone with three of those being interceptions. You get a punt block for a touchdown and you still win the game. Right? That doesn't happen very often. So um, a lot of that's attributed to our defense, but a lot of that's attributed to these guys' will to never quit and to continue to believe that as long as there's time on the clock, we have a chance. And um, so proud of them for that and a great quality win on the road and keep our win streak going, keep some momentum going as we – Obviously, going to the biggest game of the year. Um, we said it every week, but obviously, this one has special meaning because it is the Florida Classic, and it is against our in-state rival. And so, everything is on the line this week. So, we understand the importance of this game on many fronts. And we talked about it yesterday. We'll continue to talk about it throughout this week. And um, we've got to have a great week of preparation because, you know, as we all know, records mean nothing in rivalry games. And so, the fact that we're eight and two, and they're two and eight, has no bearing on the outcome of this game. It's about the team that prepares the best, about the team that executes the best, that plays the hardest, wants it the most, and that plays a clean game. And uh, we prepare ourselves to do that. Um, I think we'll get what we deserve and um, you know, be able to continue our streak and get into the FCS playoffs. And that's the goal, obviously been the goal for the last 10 weeks. And uh, I think we have a chance to see that goal come to fruition with the, with the huge win this weekend. So we're excited about the opportunity to go to Orlando and uh, looking forward to seeing Rattler Nation there as well. We know it's going to be a, a, a festive day on many fronts. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning, Jerry. Um, Coach, um, of course, y'all still on that quest to get that at-large playoff bid and a big win at um, Alabama State. Um, a very adverse win that I would say. Was that like the the morale boost that y'all that you feel like your team needs going into this final game as they make that playoff push? Well, I don't know if we necessarily need a morale boost. Uh, we've been playing really good football. Um, I, I think we just continue to show people that we're a football team that can win regardless of the situation, um, which I, I think goes goes a long way and says a lot. Um, it would be easy if every game was a blowout. Right. You just show that you are just that much more talented than your opponents. But to show that you can win close games, uh, particularly on the road, when you have the type of adversities that we faced on Saturday, uh, I think it really speaks to the character of this team. And, and to win in the playoffs, to be competitive in the playoffs, you, you have to show that. Right. You have to show that you can win on the road. You have to show that you can battle calls that don't go your way, uh, that you can handle the elements. It was very you know, windy. It wasn't necessarily cold, but it was very windy. And so to handle all of those things and, and, and find a way to get it done really speaks a lot to this team. So I, I don't think we need a necessarily a morale boost. 
Um, I think we're just continuing to strengthen our resume and show everyone what we're made of. But we don't need any motivation for this weekend. Like we all know what's at stake. And so if we gotta if we gotta talk to get them up this week, then they 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 truly don't understand what this robbery is all about. But um I think for the most part, all of our guys do. Even if they didn't play here last year, they're they're probably from the state of Florida and they've grown up their whole lives hearing about the Florida Classic, probably even attending Florida Classic. So um yeah, this one here is 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 as big as they get. Coach, speaking of the playoffs and the postseason and you know, not to put the car before the horse, but where do you guys stand as far as applying for to host that first round game? You know, if you, in fact you do make it and to have the backing of the city uh, in, in that pursuit, just what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> I think today's the deadline to submit the bid. And we met last week as an administration. Um, Dr. Robinson is leading the charge to, to get the bid submitted. Obviously, you know, maybe Mike Smith, um, has everyone on deck and all hands on deck to make sure that everything is is done properly. Um, we're talking to the city of Tallahassee, uh, visit Tallahassee, the, you know, the sports bureau commission, everyone who would be integral in us successfully hosting a playoff game has been contacted. So uh, we all want that. We all understand how important that is for this city, for this university, for this football program. And, and, and we're... Um, pulling out all the stops to make sure that it happens. And so we know we have to take care of business on our end. Uh, we have been contacted by the NCAA, obviously, as a team that um, has a strong chance of getting in. And so we still have to take, take care of business on, on Saturday. Last year, we didn't know until Sunday morning that we were getting in. And I think last year's win uh, solidified it. And I think the same thing will happen this week. I think we're right there on the cusp of it. Um, hopefully when the top 25 releases today that we'll be in it. And I think that's that goes a long way as well. Um, but I think a big win this weekend in the Florida Classic will go ahead and solidify that. Two back-to-back -back nine win seasons, well, three back-to-back -back nine win seasons, um, excluding 2020 when we didn't play, shows that we're a consistent program. And I think there's something to be said about that. So I think if we take care of business on Saturday, all in, in indications point to us being one of those at-large teams. Coach, um, good morning, sir. So how uh, how much does all this conversation about the postseason and just the fact that it just seemed like you could touch it, feel it, taste it, adds to your uh, job of trying to keep these guys focused on Saturday and just Saturday? Well, I think there's a, a fine line between um, stating the obvious and, and overplaying things and, and underplaying things, right? That's a part of that psychological um, game that, that we as head coaches play, right? How much emphasis do we place on this weekend's game? Um, do we talk about it like it's any different than any other game? Do we treat it just like any other game? Do we put the pressure on them to know that everything is riding on it, the playoffs, this rivalry, um, our winning streak, you name it, right? And so the, the thing I've always tried to do is be honest, right? Just be honest with the guys about what this week's game is all about, what the implications are, you know, and, and then what it takes to, to prepare yourself mentally and physically to be ready for it. And, and, and so the old saying of getting up for games and getting down for games, that's what I try to prevent. I, I try to prevent that narrative that we have to get up for this game, no, you, you got to get up for every game, right? We we have a saying that every game is the biggest game of the year. Um, one of the officials in last week's game came up to me in pregame, and I uh, said he listens to our weekly press conferences, on, you know, in the SWAT calls, and he's like, I appreciate when you say that, coach, because every week they say, you know, is this a big game, and it's always the same answer. Every game is a big game. This is the biggest game of our lives, right? This is the biggest game that I've ever coached in. This is the biggest game that our team has ever played in. This is the biggest game that Rattler Nation has ever been involved in. Why? Because it's the one we get to play this week, you know, and if we take that mindset and we apply it to how we prepare mentally and physically, uh, we'll give ourselves a chance to go in and be successful. And so, no, I don't think we have to get up for the Classic. I don't think we have to play down in the Classic. I think we have to prepare ourselves to go out and play our best football, but that's our goal every single week. And if we do that, then everything else will take care of itself. Coach, I know you mentioned uh, in your press conference, uh, you said um, 
soon the, the nation will have to acknowledge the level of play that the swag you know plays in. How did Saturday's game kind of move that kind of narrative forward of swag football is good football? I think if you just you know if you're a fan of the sport, um, if you follow college football at, at all levels, um, Division One FBS, uh, Division One FCS, even Division Two, uh, I, I think there, I, I think you have to acknowledge the resurgence of HBCU football in the national landscape. You know, Benedict College um, is the, the, the number one seed in their region in Division Two, and uh, getting the first round by. First time in program history, they're undefeated in the regular season. You know, um, Jackson State is ranked in the FCS top five, right? We're riding an eight game streak. Uh, again, three straight years of potentially three straight years of nine wins. Alabama State uh, will finish with a winning record. North Carolina A&T um, will, will, for all intents and purposes, will win the big, the big South. You know, so again, I, I think, if, again, if you're paying attention, you, you have to notice what we're doing within our programs and not just because we're HBCUs, but because we're, we're playing good ball. And this, this conference is a strong conference. North Carolina Central is playing really good football. They're right on the cusp of, of, of cracking the FCS top 25 as well. And so we're just all committed to growing our brands. And, and that's within the MEAC, the SWAC, the CIAA, the SIAC, uh, because for years we have been kind of looked down upon on the national level. Um, in regards to our, our quality of competition, in regards to the, the coaching that we have. And um, I, I would put it up against anybody in America just because I, I believe in what we have as, as products with the people that we're coaching, the people that are coaching, uh, that are coaching these young men. And um, again, I do think the nation is, is taking notice, maybe not the rate we need, we want them to or need them to, but I do think people recognize that FAMU, Jackson State, Benedict College, North Carolina Central, North Carolina a and that we're all quality programs and deserve the right to show that, you know, on the national stage, not just within our respective conferences. Good morning, Coach. How are you today? Hey, good morning. This, it's Ty. Um, quick question about the Florida Classic. It's a huge game, as we mentioned. Um, what are you telling your guys heading into this game? What we're telling them, obviously, like I said, you know, I'm always honest with them, telling them the truth about what this game means. Um, we we talk about winning all of our natural rivalry games, and this is obviously the biggest of those because it is our in-state rival. And so most of these guys, like I said, if you're from the state of Florida, if you have family within the state of Florida, you know a Rattler and you know a Wildcat. They may be neighbors. They may be church members. They may be coworkers. They may be spouses, right? And so the bragging rights that go with this game are endless. Um, Pastor Elwood here in town, right? We, we visit his church. My wife and I frequent his church, and he's a huge Wildcat. Went to Bethune. And um, so – we got to go in and make sure we can smile and, and, and joke with them about beating them. You know, I got neighbors who went to Bethune. And so just the, the rivalry, it's as big as any rivalry in college football, in my opinion, right? Whether you're talking about Auburn, Alabama, USC, Notre Dame, you know, Florida, Florida State. Um, you can put the Southern Grambling. Um, you can put this one right up there with it because it, it's a huge game. Everyone looks forward to it. The records don't matter. Um, so again, our guys understand that, and, and we know that we have to go in and play good football because again, you can't look at the records and just think because we're eight and two and they're two and eight that we can just roll the ball out there and play and beat these guys. They're a very talented football team, and like I told the team on on uh, yesterday during the scout report, their record doesn't reflect what you see on film as far as their talent. They're a really talented football team. Uh, they have some really good players. They have explosive players. Um, they have one of the top tight ends in America, Kamari Averett. They have a true dual threat quarterback in Jalen Jones, uh, who transferred from the University of Florida. They have uh, one of the top kick return guys in the nation, and Darnell Dees. I mean, they have talent across the board, you know, and they're a dangerous football team if you allow them to be. So we just have to go in and play really good football, um, play within who we are, not try to do too much, just play solid, sound football, and, and play as a team. 
Uh, but again, we definitely have talked to the guys about what this game means on the national stage as far as our playoffs, uh, as far as the playoffs, as far as our winning streak, um, but also as far as this rivalry. And for 365 days, uh, we got to hear about this game, uh, whether we win it or lose it. So we definitely want to make sure we go in and take care of business because uh, I know how it feels to leave that game without a win, and it's not a great feeling. And uh, we, we don't want to experience that again. I have another question. Okay. So um, you, this week we saw the emergence of guys like Dre Jones. A lot of our transfer guys are having great seasons. One of my questions to you at Media Day was regarding how you would get a lot of your new pieces to gel, especially with the players that you've already had, given the season that a lot of these guys are having. Um, just talk about how you've been able to do that from a coaching standpoint. Well, obviously – a lot of the credit, most of the credit goes to the guys in that locker room. Um, obviously, as the head coach and as, as coordinators and assistant coaches, it's our job to teach these guys our schemes, put them in a position to be successful, and, you know, coach them up on the things that matter the most in the game of football as well as life. Uh, but like I tell the team all the time, whether they're high school, incoming high school, freshman, two-year transfer or four-year transfer, when they walk into that locker room for the first time, the question is, what do they walk into, right? Do they walk into a locker room of individuals? Do they walk into a locker room of a close-knit team? What's the standard that's set the first time they go in there? And whatever that standard is, that's what those guys will respond to. So if they walk in there and everybody's doing their own thing and, you know, we don't hold each other accountable and it's just this kind of do-as-you-please type of culture, then that's what they're going to do. But when they walk in there the first day and everybody's pulling in the same direction, Everyone's holding each other accountable. They know how hard we work. They know what our level of commitment is. Then they'll buy into that as well, or they'll stick out like a sore thumb. And fortunately for us, we brought in some guys uh, that have really been committed to, to being a part of this culture. But more fortunately, we have some guys like Xavier Smith, Isaiah Land, Chris Fadul, uh, Jose Romo Martinez, Rashawn McCray, uh, McKay, that has built a strong locker room and so those guys came in and understood that, hey, for me to be able to play here, I, I got to be a part of this. And I got to buy in. And Isaiah Major, Dre Jones, Jeremy Musa, um, you know, you name it down the line, those guys have bought into what we do. Uh, they're a close-knit group of guys. And, and that's why they've had the level of success that they've had. So, again, I get a lot of credit that I don't deserve, but our players deserve the credit for those guys that have just joined this program, being able to play the, the, the way they are this season. Coach, I wanted to ask you, I know you were asked this last week, and, and this isn't the first time that your name's been brought up in, in other coaching searches and, and out on the national stage, but what do you tell the guys in this? I mean, I know you're focused, you're locked in on this season, uh, but but what do you tell your team when, when your name does get brought up and in, in, in other coaching jobs that are going on? Oh, well, obviously, I'm honest with them, you know, and I, I tell them, yes, because of our success, uh, my name gets linked to uh, my fair share, of the, the, a fair share of jobs. Um, a lot of that is, is just you know, hyperbole. Um, there's no validity to it. Um, most of the time, we're not contacted by schools. Um, any of us that have agents, we don't ever get contacted anyway, right? It's our agents being contacted. The search firms reach out to our agents and see if we'll be interested in any kind of type of job. So um, a lot of the jobs that I'm linked to, I, I haven't even talked to these people. And so I, I, I'm honest with the team about that, but I'm also honest with them about the fact that because of the success that we're having, which is directly attributed to them, that's just part of the business, right? Anytime you're in a profession um, and you're doing well, people are going to take notice. Isaiah Land has every NFL scout coming through here because he's playing well, right? And they want to see if what they see on film, if what they're hearing is is valid so they come in and they do their evaluations well there's no it's no different search firms hear my name they can pull up my resume and see out my record over the years and so yeah there's inquiries about whether you know i'm the coach that people say i am or whatever the case may be and so but we can't allow that to distract us as a football team i can't allow that to distract me as a coach my assistant coaches can't allow it to distract us because we have a job to do right because even if my name is linked to a job if I'm not offered the job, then there's nothing that I can do. So if we're focusing on the next job or where we're going to be next year, 
we're not where our feet are and we're not taking care of business. And the only way to continue to keep your name floating in those circles, which is honestly something that I know every coach on my staff wants to do. I believe I have 10 guys who aspire to be head coaches. So I want their names to be circulating for, for you know, head coaching jobs, coordinator jobs, G5, P5 opportunities at the FBS level, because I want what's best for my coaches, just like I want our players to be on the NFL scouts radars, CFL, arena football, XFL, USFL, all the different sports leagues that are beyond Florida and them. I want our players to be linked to those. And so for us to do that, we have to continue to play good football. And to me, the only way to play good football and coach well is to be where our feet are and focus on what we have to do today. And so that's how I kind of keep myself grounded. Um, obviously, I'm human. So, and, I, and I'm on social media. Obviously, I post a lot of things. So I see the, 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 the me, I see my name kind of being circulated. I see the preseason list that have me as one of the up and coming coaches that, you know, are on the radar to a potential jobs. But I'm the head coach of Florida AM. and And until that changes, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be the head coach of Florida AM and m and pour everything I have into these young men, into these coaches, into this university, into this community, because that's what the good Lord has blessed me to do. And so I'm just not that guy that, that I never searched for a job. I've never reached out to a school about coaching there. Um, I've always just tried to be the best at where I am. And the opportunities that I've been presented in my life have all come from the fact that we have done well at our previous spots. And so that's that's how I think this thing works. And um, I'm going to continue to to do what I can to be the best head coach that I can be. And I think our players appreciate that about me. Um, I'm always honest with them. I always tell them the truth. And, and they never hear in the media that I've taken a job or, or that, you know, one of my coaches is, is leaving. We're going to bring the coach in and talk to the team directly. If if I happen to take a job one of these days, the team will be the first ones to know. Uh, after my Right after my family, the team will be next. And that's just the way, um, because they deserve that, right? They, they, they've given everything to me, to this university. Um, but I don't want that to be a distraction, right? I never want my name being linked to any other job or any other opportunity to be a distraction and sort of prevent that. We get, on, we get in front of it. We've talked about it already as a football team. And like I told them, you know, Deion Sanders is no different. Jackson State has had to go all season with his name being linked to Power 5 jobs, right? But we're, we're the two best teams in black college football. And so naturally, our names will probably be floating around until the right opportunity comes and we feel like we're leaving, right? So, can't you know, you can't let that stuff distract you. Um, I know it's a long answer, but you know, in short, I'm just honest with the guys. I tell them up front what, where we are with things, and um, we're going to continue to be where our feet are. Coach, um, the Florida Classic, uh, since its inception in 1978, has become one of the biggest rivalries in college football, period, especially in the state of Florida. Also coming up on the 25th year of it being played in Orlando. I want to know from your point of view, what's your favorite part about the Florida Classic? Man, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Uh, it, it's just such an amazing event. Um, you know, over 50,000 fans yearly. Uh, we've had over a million and something fans, you know, during the time in Orlando. Uh, I expect another huge crowd this weekend. Um, just the, the, the parties, the activities, um, the, the marching of the bands, I mean, the battle of the bands, um, the halftime show that I'm not – able to see unfortunately uh but just you know and then and then obviously the football game like they're just so, there's so much that goes that surrounds this game you know you're talking about the contest between the two uh prominent hbcus in the state of florida right uh, we all know how, how big college football is in this state there's only two division one hbcus in the state and that's florida and them and bethune cookman and so for us to be able to uh, ballot out on the gridiron every year down in Orlando is something that we all look forward to. And, and with two store programs, very successful. Uh, they haven't had this, the recent success uh, that they've enjoyed over the years. Uh, but again, we know how big this game is. Two straight years in 18 and 19, they've cost us opportunities. In 18, they cost us an opportunity to win the MEAC in our first season outright. 19, they cost us the opportunity to go undefeated in conference play and, and, and truly be able to claim an undisputed possibly national championship, right? And, and so 
Uh, we were able to get the monkey off of our backs last season, you know, thankfully. Uh, but we know this year is no different. You know, our playoff aspirations are riding on this game. Our ability to finish in the FCS top 25 for the third consecutive season that we played is riding on this game. Our nine-win win streak, which is one of the longest in America, is all riding on this game. And, and so we we definitely understand what's at stake. Um, but again, just everything surrounding the game is, is huge. Uh, I can't really single out one thing to say it's, it's, it makes the weekend what it is. I think the culmination of all the events that surround the game and then obviously the game itself being played on, on Saturday uh, is what makes this uh, a national pastime for anybody who's a Rattler you know, or, or a Bethune-Cookman Wildcat. Any more questions for Coach? Yeah, last last question for you, Coach. Um, I know uh, the uh, director of recruiting, Devin Rispers, he's a big Wildcat, you know, went to high school with him. But just, um, you know, just talk about his what, what he has meant to the program, you know, and going into this game. I remember last year we was on different sidelines, but we're on the same one this year and, and, and how that will affect the team. Well, well I'm going to correct you. He went to Bethune, but he's a big rattler, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but no, obviously, you know, Devin played his college ball down in Bethune, and he's a local guy, right? Grew up right here in Tallahassee, right here on the south side. Went to Rickers High School. Was a highly recruited guy coming out of high school. Uh, he and I actually played, you know, against each other in high school at rival schools. Um, but he's always grown up a rattler fan, you know, just he went to Bethune, right? I grew up right there in Florida State's backyard. And I went to Clemson. So it happens, right? Guys from Tallahassee don't always come go to school in Tallahassee. And so he he knows that he went to our rival school. But there, there's not a bigger supporter of FAMU and FAMU football than Devin Rispers. I mean, the job that he does on the recruiting front, um, contacting these, these prospective student athletes, you know, building relationships with them, getting them on campus for unofficial and official visits. I mean, he he's a he's a pit bull, man. And he's been the godsend to this program, um, you know, just in recruiting, allowing us as coaches to kind of focus a lot more on the X and O's. We still have to be heavily involved in recruiting. Um, but again, man, we, we've had so many top-notch recruits on our campus this past year, and primarily at football games. Uh, but that's attributed to the job that Devin has done, as well as Kendall Perry, you know, our, our um, director of on-campus recruiting. And so, again, you know, they're behind the scenes. They obviously don't get the credit that they deserve or the attention that they deserve, uh, but we cannot do what we do, and we cannot have the ability to sign a top class, which we will do this year, without the impact that they have every single day. And so, uh, I know it's kind of a, a, a I don't, I don't want to say bittersweet week for him, uh, but obviously, anytime you're in that situation where you're playing against your alma mater, you know, there's a little bit different feeling, right? I, I've coached against Clemson throughout my career, right? You know, when I was at Clemson, playing against Florida State. Right. That was personal to me because I'm from here and to be able to play in Dope Camel Stadium, a stadium that I grew up in around and, you know, had a, have a lot of friends who attended. Uh, it, it does bring a little bit of special meaning to the game. But rest assured, we know where Devin's heart lies. Like We don't have to worry about uh, leaving game plans around for him to, you know, give down to, to the coaches there because he wants to beat them <laughs> as bad as anyone. Right. And, and again, but that's just that's part of this profession. At some point, if you're doing this long enough. Uh, you're going to go against your alma mater. That's just part of it most of the time. And, and most of the time, people are loyal to who pays, who pays them, right? And right now, uh, FAMU's paying Devin, not Bethune. So, again, we know, <laughs> we know, we know what side of the, of the bread his butter, his, his butter for him. No, I just, I just, I just like, I always like messing with him with that. But um, just, just for my ignorance, as far as the, the, the playoff bid situation, because I always was – I always thought it was, you know, the person with the best record would would would, would host the, the home game. And then last year I saw that wasn't the case because we had a better record than Southeast of Louisiana. So can you just kind of explain to me as far as how, how that works, as far as if you meet a team that has a worse record than you, it's still a possibility for you guys to play them away? Or I, I'm just kind of confused about that situation. Right. So the, the way the FCS playoffs works, and obviously it's grown because the field keeps expanding. It's up to 24 teams now. Um, the only teams that are guaranteed um, be guaranteed hosting opportunities are the, the top seeded teams. And so the top eight seeds get a one, get a first round by, and then they're guaranteed the, the, the ability to host um, their, their first game, which will be the second round. The other uh, 
16 teams, obviously, um, there's a there's a process, right? There's a bidding process that has to take place. And so you put your bid in, um, you know, as far as the ability to, to I, I guess, not say cater to, um, but provide accommodations to a visiting team, right? So we're not, quote unquote, putting in the bid to, to host a FAMU home game. That's not what we're doing. We're putting in a bid to host an FCS playoff game. And so all of the rules as far as um, vendors, as far as the balls we use, the crews that come, it, it's all different. That it, It's totally out of the conference's hand. It's out of the host institution's hands. This is all NCAA sanctioned. And so all we're doing is putting in a bid to try to host a playoff game. And if we win that bid, then we'll get a chance to host. But obviously every team that wants to host has to put that bid in. Today's the deadline. And if we win the bid, we get the host. That's the way it goes. And then if we win this game, uh, if we get the bid, get in the playoffs first and foremost, win the win the first round game, then chances are we're on the road because we would then play one of the teams that have that that are seeded that have the automatic um, hosting ability. So that's the way it works, though. It's not about record. It's not about attendance or any of those things. It's, it's solely on uh, on the bid, and um, you know we, that's why we're submitting ours because. We definitely want to have the opportunity to host. Okay, so last year, what was a was a bid not submitted last year? Is that what happened? I'm not even sure. Uh, honestly, okay. I don't know for sure what the circumstances were last year. Okay, uh, okay. If, it, if it was submitted, it wasn't. It didn't win it, right? So when we traveled last year, it was a great experience. Um, we're prepared to travel again if that uh, opportunity presents itself. But but obviously, we would love to be able to host a playoff game, you know, here in Tallahassee um, the day after, you know, Florida, Florida State. All right, thank you, Coach. Coach, not to not to keep keep talking about this, but for for the bid, what goes into that? Do you know what you have to submit? Like, what what are you trying to show this committee? Well, obviously, there's a minimum financial obligation um, that you have to submit, so um, that's part of it. And then, obviously, the different amenities that you have to show that you can provide: hotel accommodations, travel accommodations. Um, logistics for you know everybody involved right so you have to be able to show the ncaa prove to the ncaa that you do have these things in place to be able to host because again what you don't want is a team have to, be, to come play on your site but have to stay two hours away because you don't have any full service hotels within the, this general vicinity so we have to show the ability to provide the resources or the amenities to a visiting team, right? So all that goes into the bid, the, the financial commitment that you have to put up front, but then also uh, the ability to to provide uh, the the accommodations for the, for the visiting team that that's coming to town. So you know we we met on it. Um, our administration knows what what needs to be submitted, and I feel confident that we'll submit that bid today if we haven't already. And um, we'll keep our fingers crossed that a we get into the playoffs. Uh, but then B, that we do have a chance to host uh, uh, the first Saturday uh, after Thanksgiving. And then when would you find out if you got, like you submit today, would you find out even if before you even knew if you made the playoff that that bid was granted? Or would you um, find out when you made it? I think you find oh. out when you make it, right? So we'll okay. we take care of business this weekend, obviously. And, and um, we'll be more likely notified. Uh, early that Saturday or Saturday, Sunday morning uh, about whether we got into the playoffs. Uh, and then obviously our administration will be notified as to whether we uh, have won the bid. And so if we do, obviously, then that now the next steps to be taken to start uh, getting all the logistics together. But, um, but yeah, I, I would, I doubt that we would know before the, the, the outcome of the game on Saturday. Uh, Cause again, right after, right after everyone plays on Saturday, Obviously, the, the the selection committee uh, gets together and then they vote on those at large bids. Obviously, everyone plays this weekend, the last regular season uh, weekend of FCS football, and then selection Sunday is at noon um, this coming Sunday. And so, everyone other than the automatic, uh, the ones that win their conferences, each conference champion gets an automatic uh, acceptance into the into the FCS playoffs. There's eleven of those, uh, and then that means that thirteen at large teams. And so those 13 teams, are probably, it's probably about 18 teams that are on the bubble. And so we'll all be sitting there on pins and needles hoping that we uh, get the phone call to say that we're in. And so 
again, first things first, take care of business on Saturday. Uh, and then we'll get the team together, um, you know, come together and, and have a small uh, hosting party like we did last year and uh, hopefully get ready to celebrate and prepare to extend our season and see if we can uh, go out and, and um, remake history like we did in 1978. Any more questions for coach? Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys. Uh, hope you to coach. see everyone down in Orlando this weekend. Most definitely. Thanks, coach. All right. I'm going to send the uh, recording of the Zoom over. And if you'd like to join the SWAT call at 1145, just let me know and I'll send out the link.